Hey guys, I'm here to do my beauty Q&A. I recently asked for Q&A questions across any topics and I got loads. I was really surprised because for the first couple of hours I felt like nobody asked a question and then over the next 24 hours there were loads and there's no way I could do it in one video and it was very clearly like 50% beauty, 50% everything else together. So I'm going to do beauty and then I'm going to do everything else in a second video. Uh, other points to make, I will credit everybody who asked me a question at the bottom of both of the information in the videos, but I'm not going to cite who asked what, because sometimes four or five people asked basically the same question, and so I've like merged them together. So I've got my notes here, I need to just get this so I can definitely read it, and I'm just going to go through in the order that I kind of received the questions, rather than grouping them into like skincare, makeup, holiday makeup, blah, blah, blah. My hair's just being weird and fluffy today. Um, okay, so we're just going to dive in because if I preamble any longer, it will be too long. So, favourite eyeshadow brand? I don't have one because within the brands that I like, there are things I like and things I don't like because they use different formulas and different things. But I would say I got out three singles because as much as I've been playing with palettes for the holiday season and I've had a ball doing that, the rest of the year I do end up doing one and done, especially in the summer, quite a lot. So my favourites, I've picked like three um, one OG and two that are more recent. So this is the Laura Mercier Amethyst Caviar Stick and the reason I've picked this is because it's just so easy and it's such a unique shade that is slightly taupe or slightly light purple depending on your skin tone and what light you're in. It's creamy but it sets down, it lasts all day. I've been buying this particular one from Laura Mercier for years off and on and I absolutely love it never lets me down. New on the block is this Lisa Eldridge Liquid Silk eyeshadow. I've got several of these. They are just mostly quite neutral, almost skin tone shades. But the magic of it is it's matte and yet it doesn't look awful on, on more mature eyes, on drier or crepey eyes. It almost has like a priming, smoothing quality to it. This is the shade Irene. It blurs and t sort of makes your eyelids look really perfected and it lasts all day. I absolutely love that. And then lastly, if you prefer a powder finish, uh, the Dior singles that launched this year. This is one of the metallics. There are many shades, including some mattes and some satins. But this metallic in beige Mitza is just, again, one of those kind of shades that I tend to get a lot of use out of because it can look extremely neutral. And with you, with a bit of liner and mascara or, you know, lashes, it can be a very glamorous look too. So those are like the kind of formulas that have wowed me recently. But obviously, if you um, are looking at palettes, there are so many amazing palettes out from so many brands, but there's nothing that jumps out as like the best for me. Next, people asked blushes. I love a cream blusher, but the Merit ones don't last on me. So the Merit blushes, and I have one here in my vanity case. This is a mini size from the holiday collection. This is in bespoke. They are just like a, a kind of, um, they go on very hydrating, sheer, kind of like a, an oily balm like that. And I love these and I'm someone who's not afraid to reapply. I would rather have hydrating makeup that is sheer and that I have to reapply over stuff that is particularly long wearing because it can be dry for me. So um, I don't mind taking this. This is the sort of thing that you kind of dab a little bit more on just with your fingers when you go to the restroom or whatever. And none of them, um, that's, even the deeper shades, they're quite sheer and buildable. But if you want something that's gonna have more color payoff and last longer, but is still a cream product, I would recommend this, which is the Pocket Blush from Rode. I have got several of these, but my most used and favorite is Sleepy Girl. It's a mauve shade. And you'll see straight away from this swipe that we're talking about a more kind of full colour payoff, a bit of opacity, whereas the merits are definitely sheer. It's just so lovely, this product. And um, you could still blend it for a sheer wash, but you can always kind of tap a bit more on. But I find for a cream, this lasts longer because there is 
a more definite color payoff and the formula is just different but if you like the merit and you want something that's just the next level up i think that is it whereas the true kind of liquid blushes that i really like namely like the huda beauty one the um hourglass one where you press this and it comes out as a liquid and similarly this creamy kind of Armani one. I absolutely love all of these, but they are definitely slightly trickier than just a solid swipe blend go kind of thing. If you're not keen on the road beauty, some people don't like that packaging. I think it's super cute. I would also say my other favorite is the Westman Atelier. I have the color Chouquette and I've had, this is probably my third or fourth one. I just love the colour and the formula is very beautiful and that there's no shimmer, but similar to the Road Beauty, you just glow from like within and look really healthy. So those are what I would recommend for that. Best holiday sets, both for every day and glam. That is an amalgamation of several questions. So I am today wearing the Christmas collection from Chanel. I didn't want to apply it on camera. I wanted to just explain what I've used. So the two palette items I got from the collection were the Enchanted Night Eyeshadow and Blush Palette. And this is the one that's been a bit controversial because people feel like they didn't need eyeshadows to be this size. But I really like two of the products for the cheeks, which is just this orange. I have put all over the cheek and then I've popped a tiny dab of the pink there as a pop. And on the eyes, I've managed to use all four shades. I used the orange to the middle and then the purple. But before I started, I washed a sheer wash um, of this just kind of above the crease to warm it up, but not much. Um, I, that's the only way I can make the pink work on me. And then the silver, I just put a tiny bit in the inner corner. If you put it over the lids, you very much will dial down the orange and the purple and give like a very shimmery wash that makes those colours a little bit more pastel-y. So I didn't want to do that today, but I have done it before and it's really nice. So I actually really love this. I didn't want to get it and then uh, I saw lots of content creators making looks with it and I thought actually it looked really fun. And I feel like similar to what I said about the Gucci holiday collection in my last video, there's colourful and some colourful makeup is just too random for me and too full on, which is why I didn't get the Danessa Myrex Lightwork 6. It looks stunning, but I know that so many of the colours in there are just too amped up for me. If I'm going to do bright colours like this, it's going to be in a semi-sheer way. And I think the interplay of the purple and the orange is unexpected and yet oddly flattering. And the other large kind of component was the diamond dust highlighter and similarly I wasn't going to get this because if you see kind of I think most of it's gone now but on this side there is a overspray that is extremely glittery which I don't really like super glittery makeup let alone on my cheeks but when you get rid of that you get underneath a peachy gold kind of pinky peachy and gold shift that is incredibly flattering it's not a daytime highlighter for me. It's a special occasion highlighter and it's huge. I wish it was the standard smaller size compact. I don't really understand where Chanel are going with these ginormous things. I haven't got much storage space and I'd rather have more choice of makeup in smaller sizes. I mean, I think this is like 15 grams or something silly. Yes, it is. Um, the one in the summer, the stripy Le Beige palette that's this size, you've got your three shades. You've got bronzer, blush highlighter but all of this will probably outlive me but you know it's fun and that shift is unique um and once you get past i could just see it around the edge of the rim that gold overspray but i don't know why they bother doing that because that's not what you're getting underneath but once you get past that you've got a lovely party highlighter that is sophisticated so this is my favorite i think of the kind of really going into party mode um the lips i am wearing the rose is it rose boreal and this is one of the um lestre lipsticks from chanel which is my favorite lipstick formula and this is a pink but it's got like a slightly blue iridescence through it so again not a daytime look for me but i'm going to the theater tonight so i'm going to keep this look on i also got the orange shade which i think is orange poupre or something like that i can't the 
names are only on these refill parts um but that is more of a just a standard lestre lipstick in a lovely kind of pumpkiny brownie orange shade swatch them all and then i got one of the liquid lipsticks there was a red and a pink and the pink was quite similar to my pink here so i got the red this is the only thing that maybe i didn't need in this collection i'm not sure how much wear i will get out of it because it's pretty full on but i may be able to wear it in a kind of a blotted way or i wouldn't wear these colors and the red lip i would just do the diamond dust highlighter black liner mascara and the lip and avoid colorfulness with a red lip that's this kind of black cherry-esque goes great with my nails so these are the lip colours that I got from the collection. And there were a couple more Lestre, one more liquid, which is, again, the magenta kind of metallic. And um, there were some other products like a, a black kind of liquid eyeshadow. Uh, I don't like the formula of that. I've tried them before. And there were a couple of nail varnishes, and I think that's about it. But I definitely don't regret the Lestre lipsticks that I got and these okay for wearable more everyday holiday releases i've got three recommendations one is the dragon palette from um hourglass there are three of these this is the lightest one but i feel like the colors are just neutral and flattering on light to fair um fair to light skins and then i was looking at the other two there's a really deep one and the shades are actually lovely in that kind of plummy almost burgundy and kind of coppery shades the middle one which i think is i can't remember what what it's got on the front of it um it's just got the really really bright livid blushes which i just don't like this one's got a corally peachy one a mauvey one a very light bronze highlighters and finishing powders and i've used this so much since i got it so if you wanted to gift something to someone that you know as a sort of big present that you know they will just it's so nice they'll get so much use out of it anyone would like it that's one and then obviously when we're looking at gifts um you might want to get the more mini sets for people if you're just looking for a smaller present and my favorite has been the two mini gifts from natasha denona so in one set i don't have the packaging anymore i'm afraid um was this taupe eyeliner with just draw a little squiggle of that it's a really nice formula and a really unusual color this is the Macro Tech Eye Crayon, which I think is new, but it's quite a big size for a mini. And then it came with a I Need a Nude palette, like a mini, with three shades from the big I Need a Nude palette, which I don't have, so this was useful, and I'm gonna use this for travel. And you've got three shades in here. I far prefer this to that little rose one that had five shades in it. For some reason, I find these um, formulas and the color just absolutely flawless. There's the liner. So it's lighter than a um, kind of a brown mascara, but it's slightly warmer than a grey. And I think um, I've done an eye look with these three and this, and it's just so good. And then the other thing they released in like an ornament package with a loop on the top that you could hang on the tree is this rose cheek, little rose cheek duo. Again, this has been released before, I think, in a bigger size. But this is just a nice peachy cream blush. I mean, a peachy pink and a little highlighter again complements the eye look and i think together or just one of these sets would be a perfect introduction for someone who's not really tried natasha denona and other holiday sets that i really like um and i'm not going to open these or swatch them because they are gifts for people laura mercier has come out with quite a few of these but these are the two i got the enchanting shimmers three caviar sticks so in this one you've got like a coppery kind of rose shade a burnished bronze which is a sort of quite browny bronzy shade and then a kind of gold color so i think this is a great formula as i showed you a minute ago with the amethyst full size one and then this has got a full size one of those in a rosy shade with a rose powder blush i think either of those for a makeup lover make an excellent gift as you know i have been working my way through reviews of the holiday collections that I like. I won't be doing a Chanel one because I've just spent 10 minutes telling you about it. And I do love other things like the Clay de Peau and this 
Addiction Tokyo quad. I will take you through all of those. I mean, look at this. This just arrived today. This is my Odin's Eye Snow Dream palette, which I never thought I'd be able to get because it was from a year or two ago. But when they relaunched their new Christmas palette for this year, they re-released some old Christmas palettes. And this was the one I wanted and they brought it back. I mean, look at those colours. So, you know, but these are more niche and they're not going to appeal to everyone. So I'm just, I've told you about the ones that I think have really broad appeal. Okay, right. Where did my love of makeup start? I don't specifically know, but I will just share a memory that stands out. When I was 14, we went on holiday to stay with my parents' friends who'd moved from London to Portugal. And when we got there, they showed me to my room. And I remember it was a really weird room in the basement of their villa. So there was no outside window and it was all tiled. And it was a funny, like, triangular shape, but it was lovely. And on the bedside table was a little Chanel compact about this big. And I opened it and it had a mirror. And then just the pan was full of, like, a pale pink very shimmery lip gloss that you stuck your finger in and put on your mouth and I remember that I used that thing for about two years it was my treasured treasured possession and it was the first kind of proper high-end bit of makeup I'd got uh, my dad had also bought me a bottle of Chanel cocoa which I chose which is quite full-on for a teenager um when we'd been going through the airport on the way there so I had a Chanel fragrance for the first time ever and I had this lip gloss in this compact it was like a light reflecting one it was beautiful and it just those things made me feel special grown up confident and I think that feeling kind of stuck um have you tried any violet FR, yes, and I got them out to show you. So she has other products. I think she is, the lady who's created this brand is a creative director of the makeup at Golin, I think, or Givenchy, I can't remember. Anyway, she's got her own brand and she's got these, she's got loads of other products, but the things that are like her cult products are these lip products, the packaging's lovely. So she has the Bizu Balm and that's what she launched first. So you've, this is the component nice detail there on the lid I don't know if you can see that design etched so I have got two shades I have got bonbon cocky lip which is a oh my god what does that say bonbon cocolico which is just red I can't remember what the cocolico means it's a berry or a fruit anyway and they're sheer and they're matte and they're balmy and very like a nice flattering blurry finish but they can be a tiny bit drying in the winter the second one i've got is bisou or betest which is um like their most it's always selling out it's their most popular one and that's like a berry shade like a just bitten kind of vibe there but they're nice you just have to make sure your lips aren't super chapped and do a bit of lip balm underneath but this one is new formula this year I think this is Pomme d'Amour in the Bisou Jelly and this one has got the colour in the central core and then a hydrating jelly around and these are probably even less kind of pigmented but it just they smell gorgeous as well vanillary but oh, is it vanillary or caramelly that sweet kind of creamy caramelly vanilla creme brulee um, that's there but you'd be surprised you do get some impact on I can't do it now so just put the Chanel lipstick on I like both of these formulas I think that the cult product is the matte one that blurred just bitten lip stain is very attractive very no makeup y but yet very French highly recommend all three of those um brush recommendations budget and splurge I knew I'd forgotten to get something out Real Techniques. I've only got one Real Techniques brush out at the moment, and this is an essential that I use every single day. So this has got a kind of um, little slanted lining brush, quite chubby though, for that purpose. And I use that to put brow pomade on sometimes, especially to fill in this outer third. I also use it to um, 
sort of line or tight line and I use this to brush through my brows and lashes so I love real techniques and I have got probably nearly all of the face and eye brushes that they do they are all um, vegan and man-made so they're great for using with cream products um, and for travel and stuff I also have some mini ones I think they're really good for the price uh, for expensive brushes, uh, my most expensive brushes are Sonia G and I'm slowly building up quite a collection of those. The next kind of rung down in price are Refa and if you sign up and join for the concept store and have a membership with Refa, you get to test out brushes at kind of half price sometimes. It's amazing. The quality is amazing. So my most expensive brush in my collection is this Sonia G tf1 which is a bronzer brush which kind of replaces my tom ford bronzer brush which is something so beloved to me but it started to really shed because obviously the glue is going and it's releasing and so this is even bigger but even more um luxurious so i am really loving this and then something that i love so much from refa my favorite refa brush is the collab with Alexandra and Nell, and this is the AA01. This is a very unique face brush where you've got a gradually tapered side and a long fiber side. You've got this very, very, very airy tip where only some of the fibers have gone all the way to here for a very diffused, but precise because of the size. Um, great for highlighter, uh, precise placement of blush and bronzer. It's, it's so, I wish I'd bought two or three and it's sold out now, but um, this is a very innovative brush. And then right down to my um, two favourite brushes from BK Beauty, which uh, if you are savvy and wait for promotional kind of offers or bundles, a really good price. These are nearly all, I think, man-made, so vegan, whereas the other two brands are mostly um that some are not but i think they're mostly natural hairs um but these two are my um face brushes that i use nearly every day the 101 and the smaller friend of it the 109 they have that kitten paw shape and this for example the larger one you can do your foundation in two seconds flat and then if you've got a smaller face or you want to be more precise say under the eyes around here or use it for cream blush this is the 109 and I absolutely love these two and they were uh, with a sale discount probably about 20 pounds each and they're so good so easy to use um so there you go that's the brushes okay um skincare or makeup what would you choose well it pains me to say it but it would have to be skincare because you can't get an attractive makeup look on skin that is not looked after. And if you don't use SPF, then you're going to have so much damage and you can't make that look great with by sticking makeup on top of it. So if I had to choose, I would have to choose skincare. And I guess if you were really looking after your skin and your skin was hydrated and glowing and exfoliated and protected by SPF, you're going to look more attractive than terrible skin that you're not looking after that's just being that's just aging from the environment and whatever else um you can't really make that look good with makeup but that would still be very sad um if you could only have one item of makeup a year now i don't know if you mean i can keep my collection but i can only add one thing a year i don't know i guess if i could only have one item of makeup it would probably have to be mascara because my face doesn't look like me in the mirror to me without mascara. I just look blank. So some days I just do uh, SPF lip balm because my lips are permanently dry and mascara. And I feel okay with now bare skin because although it's not perfect, it's improving all the time with the things that I'm doing. And therefore, as long as it's got hydration and SPF, I don't mind my blemishes and my pigmentation showing um, as long as I've got this because otherwise my lashes are just like non-existent and very light and you can't see them and they just have no, my eyes have no definition. Okay, uh, I've done the best festive makeup look is the Chanel, I think, most fun to apply because you can go really sheer, I've gone fairly sheer on the eyes and you can 
build it. You can just keep going until you're like, wow, that's enough now. Do you know what I mean? I feel like this is like colourful and fun, but it's I could go to Tesco's like this and not feel ridiculous. Um, where are we now? Winter skincare. Okay. What do you do to protect your skin in the winter? I am very dry. Okay. So um right a couple of different things you've got to exfoliate right because for me i've learned that actually um exfoliating isn't for when i'm congested just or spotty or whatever like that it's for me to get off that dead layer of skin but gently so that uh the new skin can come through and you can uh, look and feel healthy so i like the daily microfoliant from dermalogica this is like a powder it's rice based and you just put it in your hand and then put a bit of water, get it to like foam up a little bit and then work that into the skin. But it's not aggressive. I never feel like it's stripping or too harsh. I know that there are lots of um, cosmetologists and skin people who are like no physical scrubs, but I think this is good. And it has got like an enzyme um, action as well as a slight physical scrubby feel. It's very brightening. I can, it's gentle enough that I can use it in the shower and then get out of the shower and put makeup on. I'm not all red from it or anything like that. My other way that I exfoliate is, I didn't bring them in here, but like toners and stuff, but I would only do those at night because I feel like if you use a chemical exfoliant in the day, um, your skin is going to slough throughout the day and it's going to take your foundation with it and it's going to break up and you're going to end up with flaky bits, which I've already got because I am using prescription grade tretinoin. Um, this is a, the, this has just arrived, a big order of uh, skincare basics that I was running low on. This is the Kate Somerville Exfolicate Cleanser Daily Foaming Wash. So this hasn't got any um, physical feeling of scrubbiness in it. She does one that does that's like... Uh, eradicate I think it might be it's a little bit more sort of full-on and then she also does one level down which is a, an exfoliating gentle cleanser for really sensitive skin but this is the standard one in the middle it looks like this it's like a thick cream that you lather up and it's great I don't I wouldn't do these in the same cleanse in the morning, one or the other. Uh, this tends to live in the shower. The Dermalogica tends to live by the sink. I go through these because everybody in the house uses it as well and then it runs out. But this is a really nice product and you feel squeaky clean, but without feeling stripped. So for um, protecting dry skin that's dealing with, like we are at the minute, heating's on and all the rest of it, the Dr. Sam's Flawless Moisturiser, this is the pump, the new 100ml size. This is a barrier protecting, barrier repair moisturiser. It's unscented, it's thick and creamy. There's also a light one and then there's also an intense one. And even though I do get dry, dehydrated skin in winter, I find the standard flawless moisturiser just sinks into my skin the best out of all of them. But the intense one has even got more ingredients that are even more beneficial i think to older skin i can't remember now but it's got some sort of technology that switches on the skin's kind of own repair stuff um but i kind of go mostly with the flawless moisturizer and i might buy a smaller size of the intense if this cold weather continues and i feel like my skin barrier is really compromised by walking the dog in the cold and then coming into the warm dry house my skin has felt quite tight this week so this is really good for that. And as I said, you can go up to the intensive one if you're even drier than me. At night, I am, I've got a few favourites for nighttime. I really do like the um, Sicily Sleep Mask, but it's so expensive that I feel bad to recommend that to you. I only ever buy it when I get a discount. Um, but this fresh black tea firming overnight mask is what me and my husband share. And it's just a nice... Um, it does feel quite elastic and stretchy. It smells like fresh white tea or something. It's so yummy. So I, I use products that are a pleasure to use. They motivate me to use them. And this the smell and the texture are so nice. And if my skin is in a bit of a mess, I have put a thick layer of this on every night this week. And it's really helped to firm and plump. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm talking too much. So this is 100 mils in this pot. And it is about... 65 quid i think but again nearly all of the things i'm showing you on the skincare front at least i usually get 20 percent off because i wait until there's a promotion okay we're nearly there um ah oh, clinic in clinic skin treatments what have you had done oh i forgot one of the winter skin things 
Uh, I just bought this again because I ran out and I thought, oh, I can just use my other face oil, but I really missed it. So this is the um, Collagen Super Fusion, uh, I'm just trying to read it, facial oil from Charlotte Tilbury. This is a very thick, bouncy oil. Like I feel like when you put it on, your skin has this nice spongy feel. It doesn't just disappear into your skin. So I um, will put one drop sometimes in foundation or one drop in whatever moisturizer I'm using. If my skin is really dry after like a treatment or something, um, and I will either be using this or my Charlotte Tilbury Magic Cream, which I mostly use as a primer under makeup rather than just an everyday moisturizer now. But one drop of this mixed into another product is really nice. Or if you're not going out and you don't want to wear any makeup, which is hardly ever me, maybe the odd Sunday, I will put more than one drop, like quite a lot, put a hairband on to get my hair out of the way and really let it just sit and soak in. It smells divine and it really does make a difference to your skin. Anyway, uh, what was I saying? Going back to, oh, uh, what have I had done? Okay, so I met my aesthetics doctor uh, here in Bristol about two years or maybe a year and a half ago and she's now opened this amazing new clinic I will link the details below and she when she first opened the clinic she just did all of the standard kind of injectables and light therapy and um, I've used um, I've had skin pen which is microneedling and things like that and I have found them all very effective um, she's a very natural results type doctor. Um, she's a doctor, so it's a medical led clinic, which is really important to me. But she's just recently got some new machines to take things up a notch. So I'm having at the moment a course of three Morpheus 8 treatments, which is um, a much more intense microneedling with radio frequency which basically can remodel and re-sculpt certain areas so the neck I'm having the whole face eye bags they have really really reduced this kind of little fat pad that I've got here is it melts fat basically and then the skin tightens on the way out and your body over six months will continue to react to the micro injury by making more collagen and elastin and all that good stuff that we really don't make anymore by the time you get to my age. And I'm also going to have Lumeca shortly, which is a intensive pulse light therapy to bust the remains of my hyperpigmentation. So I have all of my stuff there. I do get Botox regularly. I have had a little bit of filler just here because I tend to have a downward droop to the mouth, but probably having had the Morpheus 8 um, for a couple of years, I probably won't need that filler there. It's all ongoing. I'm very excited to see what happens with my neck has really got me down since weight loss and I'm still losing. So we're going to see what happens with that, but it's good to do the Morpheus as you're slimming to keep that sort of scaffolding, the structure there going so that you don't end up having to have surgery. Well, not that you'd have to have surgery, but I might want to if my neck was completely saggy, it would really affect my confidence. So I'll let you know how that goes, but those are most of the things I get. The odd peel for resurfacing just as a reboot. Oh, and also injectables that are not um, fillers, but are more skin enhancers. I think those have also got good long-term benefits. So I have had polynucleotides, which are like um, made from DNA from an animal source, like a fish, I think. And they also just re-educate the skin inside to produce more of these. Uh, it's like stem cells, I think, that then make you switch on the production of the things that you've lost as you get older. So all of these things, I think, are very natural. I don't look like I've had stuff done, I don't think. And I'm more about like long-term prevention and um, getting my skin to do these things for itself rather than having loads of filler and loads of Botox that make you look quite unnatural. That's not really my vibe. Um, so find in your area, look at reviews, uh, go by word of mouth, do your research. And if you can go by a going from having um, nurses, no offense to them, they're very good, um, who used to do my aesthetic stuff, moving to this doctor led clinic where she takes so much time to make sure that she understands what you want and what you're looking for to manage your expectations. And then she also is so 
precise and such a perfectionist that the results I've had are always understated and just perfect. Anyway, and then lastly, I'm just scanning through in case I missed any of the beauty questions. Top three holy grail of all time makeup products. Uh, that's the last question. Well, that's very difficult. Okay. Number one is going to be my Chanel CC cream. And this is holy grail because I've been buying it for years and it's got SPF 50. It's got loads of coverage, but yet it never on me looks cakey or draws attention to pores. I feel like it's the perfect kind of marriage of skincare and makeup. It lasts a long time. It's incredibly thick. It used to just come in one shade and then they went into individual shades. I am 20 beige. Um, this is really nice when um, you want to skip a step. I mean, I don't advocate skipping SBF, but if I apply this and I know I'm not going to be outside much, then this is kind of enough. But usually I do put my um, Sarah Chapman Skinesis Invisible 50 on first. It's just almost like your full coverage foundation. You can build it up to that. But because of all the skincare in it, in the CC ingredients and the SPF 50, it's just easy. And I, this the best results I get is with using my fingers. The warmth from your fingers to massage this in, I would say for best results, still be a little bit tacky or silky from your skincare. So you can buff without drag and really work it in and use a tiny bit and build up. If you still need a bit of coverage, I then go with my fingertip around my hyperpigmentation. I've still got a bit of a black eye here from my Morpheus um, treatment, which was two weeks ago now. Um, yeah, that is Holy Grail. And then other Holy Grails, I just like, I get very wary to cite Holy Grails when I've not had something for a long time, but I'm on my second one of this Swede Cloud Mascara and I absolutely love it, especially the brown one. I've got brown and black. The brown one for a sheer every day is so good and and i and i'm on my second one but i'm wary to call that a holy grail because um for me a holy grail should be something you've bought lots of times and you just really love i would say for lips my holy grail is actually this delilah lip savior color enhancing lip oil this is my third one so i started off with two one oh no i bought one and i loved it so then i bought another one to always be in my bag and then I've bought another one now so that when one of them runs out, I've got another one. That's how much I love it. So this is from this British brand, Delilah, that I really like some of their products. I haven't really gotten into their colour cosmetics, but the wake up range I really like. And can you see this weird like metal cooling tip? You put this on and it slightly brings a bit of colour to the lips, an incredible shine, but it's a lip treatment as well. And it's great to put on and then you do the rest of your makeup and then you can go in with lipstick last. But for like that no makeup school run thing, I do this and it just is, makes you feel pretty, but it's not really makeup. And then for the eyes, I guess that mascara or, oh, I just don't know. This, I guess, if I think about it, this is something I've had for four or five years and I'm never without it. So this is the Trish McAvoy Instant Eye Lift. So this is not really quite a concealer, but it's something I put under the eyes every day. And then I may dot a bit of coverage concealer on top, but it brightens amazingly and makes this so kind of look improved, but there's no creasing or anything like that because it just, it's, it's, it, there's nothing there to do that. I'll put some more on, you'll see. It's great for just touching up that area as well if you've got a bit of creep from your liner or you're just tired or you've been touching your face and you've disturbed your concealer. There's two shades. I take the lighter one. It's sheer. I would say I would never use this with a brush or a sponge because it's going to eat it up and you need all of it to go on the eye area. So I always just use my finger and tap it in and take it up here. It it does reflect the light back, so it is gonna reduce that blueiness there, but it's not gonna give coverage as such. It just makes you look, you can see, can't you, brightened and just better, and it sort of tightens that skin as well, I feel. It's just lovely, just kind of like blend it there where it's hitting my 
highlighter and blush. There you go. So I think, yeah, this one, the Chanel CC and the Lip Savior. So nothing very colorful or exciting. Just those basics that make you look and feel better. I think that we've got to cut it off there because it's 40 minutes. I'm not gonna edit. I literally don't have time. And I wanted this to be like a real conversation. If I didn't get to your question, um, and I've missed something because maybe it came when I finished like copying out the questions. Just leave your question down in the comments and I will do another part with all the non-beauty stuff. I hope you enjoyed this and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.